Friends welcome, my name is W. Tonight I want to take you on a journey back through time into the darkest depths of ancient oceans. Here something truly massive once swam, a creature so vast it made the great white shark appear as a mere guppy. This was an apex predator of unimaginable proportions. Imagine teeth the size of a grown human's hand, each one a perfectly evolved instrument of predation. Consider a bite force so immense it remains unmatched in Earth's history. This was the reality of the most terrifying predator to have ever graced our planet's waters. We are about to confront a legend, a creature whose name evokes wonder and fear. Join me as we dive into the fossil record, exploring the truth behind this colossal shark. We'll uncover the mysteries that shroud its existence, examine the world it inhabited, and the reasons for its dramatic extinction. The story of Megalodon is more than just a tale of a giant shark, it's a testament to the raw power of nature. Let's dive into the truth, the mystery, and the extinction. The name Megalodon, derived from ancient Greek, translates to big tooth. These were colossal, perfectly engineered weapons that tell a vivid story of predation on an epic scale. Holding one of these fossilized relics connects us directly to this ancient, formidable life. Graced our planet's oceans from approximately 23 million to around 3.6 million years ago. This vast expanse of time stretches across the Miocene and the Pliocene epochs. Megalodon's reign lasted for nearly 20 million years, a period during which countless other species emerged, thrived, and vanished. Estimating the exact size of an extinct creature known primarily from teeth and a few vertebral remains is complex, but the consensus paints a picture of breathtaking scale. Conservative estimates suggest Megalodon reached lengths of 50 to 60 feet. Imagine three modern great white sharks swimming nose to tail. Megalodon would have rivaled that combined length. Some estimates hint at individuals that might have approached the length of a bowling alley. Scientists calculate that a fully grown megalodon could have weighed over 50 tons. This is heavier than many species of whale that it would have preyed upon. Every movement of such a creature would have displaced enormous volumes of water. The teeth of course are megalodon's most famous legacy. Typically measuring between 6 to 7 inches in diagonal length, these are veritable daggers of enamel and dentine. Unlike the smooth-edged teeth of some sharks, Megalodons were finely serrated, like a steak knife. These serrations ensured that every bite was devastatingly effective. Scientific models estimate Megalodon's bite force to be up to an astonishing 40,000 pounds per square inch. This is many times greater than that of a great white shark. Imagine something so powerful it could bite a whale in half. That was Megalodon, not a creature of fiction but a fossilized, tangible reality. To sustain a body of such colossal proportions, Megalodon required a diet rich in calories. Its preferred prey consisted of the largest animals the ancient oceans had to offer. We're talking about whales, baleen whales, toothed whales, and even smaller shark species. It also likely consumed large fish, seals, sea cows, and sea turtles. Essentially, if it swam in Megalodon's territory and was large enough to be a worthwhile meal, it was potentially on the menu. The hunting strategies of Megalodon were likely varied, but evidence points towards it being a formidable ambush predator. Given its immense size a prolonged chase might have been energetically costly. Instead it probably relied on its ability to approach undetected from the murky depths below or from behind its unsuspecting prey. Imagine the terror, a sudden cataclysmic impact from beneath, a wall of teeth and jaws erupting from the water. For many of its victims, the first sign of danger would also have been the last. Fossilized whale bones bear the unmistakable, gruesome signatures of Megalodon's attacks. We find vertebrae with deep gouging tooth marks and flipper bones sheared clean through. Some of the most compelling evidence comes from whale rib cages that appear to have been crushed with immense force. These fossils are not just academic curiosities, they are ancient crime scenes. Scientists theorize that Megalodon employed specific tactics depending on the size and type of its prey. For smaller whales, a powerful bite to the rib cage or spine could have been instantly fatal. For larger whales, Megalodon might have first aimed to immobilize them by biting off their flippers or tail flukes. This level of strategic predation suggests a degree of intelligence and adaptability. It didn't just hunt to survive, it utterly dominated the entire marine food chain of its era. For millions of years Megalodon faced no natural enemies, it was the undisputed apex predator, 
a keystone species whose presence would have shaped the behavior and evolution of countless other marine animals. The sheer abundance of fossilized whale bones bearing those characteristic massive bite marks provides unequivocal support for these theories. These are not isolated incidents but a widespread pattern found in fossil deposits across the globe. Each scarred bone is a silent testament to a life and death struggle. The evidence is clear, Megalodon was an unparalleled hunter, a master of its domain, ruling with a terrifying and bloody efficiency. The dominion of Megalodon was not confined to a single ocean. This super predator had a truly cosmopolitan distribution. Fossilized teeth have been unearthed from marine deposits on nearly every continent. From the coastal plains of North and South America, to the ancient seabeds of Europe and Africa, from the shores of Asia to the fossil-rich grounds of Australia, Megalodon's calling cards are found worldwide. This global presence speaks volumes about its adaptability and its success as a species. Megalodon appears to have preferred the warmer waters of the planet. Its fossils are most commonly found in regions that were characterized by temperate or tropical climates during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. It particularly thrived in relatively shallow coastal seas, these environments would have offered an abundance of its preferred prey whales often calved and fed in such productive sunlit waters. The proximity to land also explains why so many of its teeth are found in terrestrial fossil beds that were once submerged continental shelves. The reason we have such a wealth of megalodon teeth, compared to other parts of its skeleton, lies in the very nature of sharks. Shark skeletons are primarily composed of cartilage which unlike bone does not fossilize well and decomposes relatively quickly. Their teeth, however, are made of incredibly hard enamel and dentine, making them far more resistant to the ravages of time. A single megalodon could shed thousands of teeth throughout its lifetime, much like modern sharks do. This continuous dental turnover has left a rich legacy for paleontologists and fossil hunters to discover. So, if you happen to live near a coastline, particularly one with known Miocene or Pliocene fossil deposits, there's a fascinating possibility to consider. Your local beaches or cliffs might once have been part of Megalodon's ancient hunting grounds. Imagine walking along a familiar shore, knowing that millions of years ago, the waters just beyond were patrolled by these colossal sharks. It brings a new dimension to our understanding of our planet's deep history, and the incredible creatures that have inhabited it. The earth beneath our feet holds so many secrets. The sheer number of teeth found globally allows scientists to piece together a remarkably detailed picture of Megalodon's distribution and even its nursery areas. Certain locations have yielded an abundance of smaller Megalodon teeth, suggesting these were sheltered, shallow water regions where juvenile sharks could grow in relative safety before venturing into deeper waters to hunt larger prey. These findings provide crucial insights into the life cycle of this ancient giant. And for a fun fact, the largest megalodon tooth ever officially recorded measured a staggering 7.48 inches in diagonal length. To put that into perspective, that's larger than most people's hands from wrist to fingertip. Holding such a tooth, you can't help but marvel at the sheer size of the creature that once wielded it. It's a tangible link to an animal that defies easy comprehension. A relic from a time when monsters truly ruled the waves. Chapter 4, How Megalodon Ruled for Millions of Years, An Era of Dominance For an astonishing span of over 20 million years, Megalodon was the undisputed sovereign of Earth's oceans. This is a reign of dominance that few species in the history of life can claim. During this immense period, continents drifted, climates shifted, and countless other species rose and fell, yet Megalodon persisted. Its success was a testament to its incredible adaptations as a super predator. Megalodon effectively outcompeted other large marine predators of its time. While there were other sharks and predatory marine mammals, none possessed the sheer size, power, and weaponry of Megalodon. It could take on the largest prey available, prey that was simply too formidable for other hunters. This access to an almost exclusive food source, particularly large whales, gave it a significant advantage. Its hunting grounds encompassed almost every suitable warm water ocean across the globe. From the nutrient-rich upwelling zones to the vast open waters, wherever large marine mammals congregated, Megalodon was likely there. This widespread distribution ensured that local depletions in prey populations or minor environmental changes in one region would not necessarily threaten the species as a whole. Its global presence was a key factor in its long-term survival, and its extended reign as the ocean's ultimate predator. 
The only significant inherent limitation Megalodon faced was a direct consequence of its most impressive attribute, its massive size. Such an enormous body required a colossal amount of food to sustain. An adult Megalodon would have needed to consume hundreds, perhaps thousands of pounds of flesh every single day. This voracious appetite meant it was entirely dependent on the continued abundance of large prey animals. Any significant disruption to its food supply would inevitably pose a serious threat to its survival. Throughout its long tenure, Megalodon likely exerted immense evolutionary pressure on its prey. Whales, for instance, may have evolved larger body sizes, faster swimming speeds or more complex social behaviors, partly in response to the relentless predation pressure from this giant shark. In this way, Megalodon didn't just dominate its ecosystem, it actively shaped it. Its impact on the ancient oceans was profound and far-reaching, but as history teaches us time and time again, even the mightiest rulers cannot last forever. The very factors that contributed to Megalodon's success, its specialization on large prey, and its preference for warm waters, would eventually become its Achilles' heel. The world is in a constant state of flux, and the stage was slowly being set for a change in the ocean's hierarchy. The king's reign, though long and formidable, was unknowingly approaching its twilight. Chapter 5. Why did Megalodon go extinct? The fall of a titan. The extinction of Megalodon was not the result of a single catastrophic event, but rather a confluence of environmental changes and ecological pressures. Scientists believe several major factors contributed to the gradual decline and eventual disappearance of this magnificent predator. It was a slow unraveling, a testament to the fact that no species, no matter how powerful, is immune to the relentless forces of planetary change. One of the primary drivers implicated in Megalodon's demise is climate change. During the Pliocene epoch, the period leading up to Megalodon's extinction, global temperatures began to cool significantly. This cooling trend led to the formation of extensive polar ice caps and a substantial drop in average ocean temperatures worldwide. Megalodon, being a warm water species, would have found its suitable habitat shrinking dramatically. Colder waters would have directly impacted its metabolism and its ability to hunt effectively. Concurrent with this oceanic cooling was a significant loss of its primary prey. Many species of whales which formed the cornerstone of Megalodon's diet, either adapted to the colder waters and migrated towards the poles, or themselves went extinct. As the great whales became scarcer in Megalodon's shrinking warm water territories, the immense energy demands of this giant shark became increasingly difficult to meet. Starvation became a very real threat. The changing marine landscape also saw the rise of new and formidable competitors. The ancestors of modern great white sharks, smaller, more agile, and perhaps more adaptable to cooler waters, began to fill some of the predatory niches. More significantly, highly intelligent and socially complex marine mammals like early orcas, killer whales, emerged. These new predators, hunting in coordinated packs, could have outcompeted Megalodon for diminishing food resources. The combination of a cooling climate, dwindling food supplies and increasing competition created a perfect storm that Megalodon could not weather. Its specialization, once its greatest strength, became its fatal weakness. Unlike more generalist predators, Megalodon was too heavily invested in a specific ecological niche. Ultimately the king of the sea was not defeated in a singular dramatic battle by a larger foe, instead it was outlasted by the slow, inexorable march of evolution and environmental change. Its extinction, around 3.6 million years ago, marked the end of an era. Megalodon's story is a powerful reminder of the fragility of even the most dominant species in the face of a changing planet. Chapter 6. Is Megalodon Still Alive? The Lingering Question. Despite its confirmed extinction millions of years ago, the allure of Megalodon is so potent that the question of its potential survival persists in popular imagination. Could such a colossal creature still lurk in the unexplored depths of our oceans? It's a tantalizing thought. We have explored more of the surface of the moon than we have the deepest trenches of our own planet. However, from a scientific standpoint, the evidence for Megalodon's continued existence is virtually non-existent. There have been no confirmed sightings by credible sources, no modern carcasses washed ashore, and no Megalodon teeth found in marine sediments younger than about 2.6 to 3.6 million years old. Given that sharks, including Megalodon, shed thousands of teeth throughout their lives, the complete absence of recent teeth in the fossil record 
is a very strong indicator that the species is indeed long gone. The deep ocean is often cited as a possible refuge for a surviving megalodon population. While it's true that these abyssal zones are vast and largely unexplored, the conditions there are vastly different from the warm, relatively shallow coastal waters megalodon is known to have preferred. The deep sea is characterized by extreme cold, immense pressure, and a scarcity of the large, air-breathing marine mammals that constituted megalodon's primary diet. It's difficult to envision how such a large, warm-water-adapted predator could survive in such an alien environment. Occasionally, unsubstantiated claims, blurry photographs or anomalous sonar readings surface reigniting speculation. Massive shadows picked up by deep-sea equipment or unusually large bite marks on whales are sometimes attributed to a surviving megalodon. However, these are almost invariably open to alternative, more plausible explanations. Without concrete, verifiable evidence, these remain firmly in the realm of speculation and cryptozoology. While the romantic notion of a prehistoric monster still patrolling the abyss is captivating, the scientific consensus is clear. Megalodon is extinct. Its ecological niche has been filled by other predators, and the environmental conditions that supported it have long since changed. The story of its extinction is a vital lesson in how even the most dominant species can succumb to environmental pressures over geological timescales. Its disappearance was part of the natural ebb and flow of life on Earth. So, could something so truly massive, so dominant, stay hidden from science for millions of years in the modern age of exploration and technology? It is exceptionally unlikely. But the deep sea will always hold its secrets and the legend of Megalodon will continue to inspire awe and a touch of hopeful, if improbable, mystery. It reminds us that our planet has harbored wonders far beyond our everyday experience, and perhaps, just perhaps, still does in ways we haven't yet discovered. Chapter 7 The Enduring Legacy of a Titan Megalodon may indeed be extinct, a magnificent creature relegated to the annals of paleontological history. Its reign over the ancient oceans has long since ended, but its legacy, my friends, lives on, powerfully etched into our collective consciousness. It surfaces in our nightmares of the deep, it fuels groundbreaking scientific research, and it inspires countless stories, books, and films. The sheer scale and terror of Megalodon continue to captivate us. This colossal shark serves as a profound and humbling reminder that Earth, for the vast majority of its existence, was not ruled by humans. For eons, it was the domain of other giants, other titans, creatures like Megalodon. Understanding these ancient rulers gives us a deeper appreciation for the immense timescale of evolution and the ever-shifting balance of nature. The story of Megalodon is a testament to the incredible biodiversity our planet can produce. Its fossil, 